Dear colleagues, I would like to speak today about uh, gastroenterology work today uh, in our center. And um, I would like to briefly cover several aspects and the work is very uh, immense. And I work uh, in a multidisciplinary team and um, the work uh, is divided into two parts in um, inpatient and outpatient. And uh, these are patients that uh, were treated at the hospital and then they continue receiving treatment um, afterwards. And also patients that come uh, from the outside. So the patients that uh, come to us uh, um, um most likely severe uh, severe cases and they have complications um, after surgeries in gastrointestinal tract um, and they are um, present in the background of um, chemotherapy and this is a type of palliative um, assistance and um, we also take of some of uh, the work related to this issue and uh, most of the time um, patients complain about progressive weight loss. I came to the center in 2012 and in 2017 uh, you see that there were uh, 1,252 visits of patients and um, and and you see that the numbers um, are change and this is uh, the statistics that uh, I can provide you nowadays and as for the diseases uh, they are and localization of, of diseases they are different most of the time they're related to uh, stomach uh, intestinal uh, areas and um, uh, as for the com complaints, these are most of the time diarrheas, weight loss, uh, constipations, reflux, uh, dys dyspepsy, and um, others. As for the weight loss, it's uh, important to differentiate uh, the causes uh, with the progression of the disease and also after surgery complications we use for that um, we use uh, by impedant analysis and also laboratory instrumental uh, analysis tests here you see the um, uh, organism composition uh, the body composition um, body mass fat mass and um, uh, all the details and you can uh, follow it in in dynamics uh, then after all the uh, tests are printed out all the results then uh, we uh, compare them and see how the situation changes um, then as for the surgeries uh, usually the patients are very mm, difficult and um, uh, we uh, have um, good connection between the physicians and uh, um, our specialists and that's why it's easy to deal with uh, our patients but as for the patients that come from the outside from regions it's uh, a little bit more difficult for example there is a case a patient had uh, um, stomach care after gastrostomy uh, we see that there is uh, no pro progression, no progressive cancer, but um, we see uh, progress in weight loss. And um, during the examination, the weight um, during the last year, the weight loss uh, equals to 11 kilograms. And uh, so we cannot tell what are the reasons for the um, uh, weight loss. Uh, we also observe extremities edemas, and uh, the patient came from region, and uh, she was hospitalized uh, in local hospitals, and she had some symptomatic therapy. Also, uh, parenteral nutrition was given to her, but after uh, she left the hospital, she uh, continued um, 
losing weight so she came to us to find the cause uh, during uh, she, she uh, says that um, uh, she has stool 20 times a day and she cannot do anything about this as uh, fibra colonoscopy uh, you see uh, catarrhal colic and uh, superficial colic uh, without any cytological um, nostalgical signs the clinical, the blood uh, test uh, says that there is a um, decreased reduction of hemoglobin. But in this case, in additional examination, after the treatment, uh, she suffered from endocrine um, failure, uh, di dysfunction. And um, the stool analysis showed uh, pancreatine elastase uh, uh, M115. Uh, stool is four or five times a day after the treatment. There are some types of edemas, but uh, they are better nowadays. And uh, when patients come with weight loss, um, they are difficult patients. It's uh, very hard to find out the cause. And uh, another case, a similar one, uh, intestinal cancer and um, jaundice resection in 2017. And during the examination in local hospital, um, diagnosis is progressive disease. But uh, when he came to us, we see that he uh, lost his weight um, um, up to 30 um, to kilo, 30 kilos during the last year and uh, he has diarrhea and he's asking for help we observe him and uh, after the tests we see the same picture uh, so uh, here we see a green uh, deficiency because of the surgery and yesterday I asked him um, whether his condition improved and he said that uh, stool stabilized so he's compensated we do not observe progressive disease during the exam uh, final examination so weight loss uh, is a um, quite difficult issue and uh, we need to find the causes and uh, select treatment accordingly another uh, problem that patients complain about different types of reflexes that uh, happen after various surgeries, stomach surgeries. And um, here, once again, we cannot say for sure what type of reflex is this and uh, how to treat it. So if the patients complained about um, um, reflex, but uh, in in good case, uh, we can uh, we can assess the the complaint, the his medical history, but uh, we do not know how to um, to um, design the treatment scheme. So in this case, we can use uh, some methods. For example, pH uh, metria. This type of test allows uh, the character of reflected. Uh, in esophagus from stomach and intestines uh, during the examination. This type of test uh, is uh, rendered in this way. The, um, the zond is, um, is inserted into the uh, esophagus. We place it into the intestinal areas, um, it, depending on the situation, if there is um, is stomach preserved then uh, we place it in the stomach and the patient carries it during the day and um, so we monitor the esophagus the same way as we monitor a heart during the day so we uh, register types of reflexes uh, the periods of time they happen and uh, at what times of the day and according to uh, the results we choose the uh, therapy so our um, patient um, came with the um, um, cancer of enteral 
uh, enteral stomach area and uh, many in other complications. Uh, during the um, examination, we found um, also uh, res um, complaints about the um, uh, burnish in, in stomach and uh, mouth. He took inhibitors during the past year with uh, short-term uh, positive results. Uh, and during the uh, examination, we don't see any reflex disturbances. So we prescribe pH metria for the day. Reflexes have to be differentiated from uh, burnies, functional burnies, and uh, complaints that are not related to reflex in general. There can be some somatic uh, dysfunctions in stomach. And that's what the uh, tests actually showed us. During the day, as we saw, the um, a patient had only short-term uh, reflexes after the um, food intake. Then the patient had the corrective therapy. Um, prokinetics were prescribed to the patient before the um, uh, food intake. And then he went to a psychotherapist to uh, correct his functional uh, burnies. And then together with uh, additional uh, drugs that were prescribed to him, he realized that uh, there were no uh, severe complications and the dynamics was positive. So uh, he, now he uh, is not complaining about burnies anymore. And um, we've talked about uh, the therapy that uh, he has to go through. And in half a year, we're going to um, give another test uh, therefore so we managed to make a, a clear diagnosis after gastrectomy a patient came to me uh, with the complaints that uh, during the past two years uh, she um, uh, is hospitalized uh, often hospitalized with aspirational pneumonia. So she uh, wakes up during the night and uh, with a, a kind of nausea and uh, burnies in uh, esophagus. And she receives uh, some treatment, but there is no positive uh, dynamics. There are many uh, foci in uh, lungs, and this is a uh, rec recidive superior lobe uh, pneumonia. So after the examination, uh, we do not see the any um, uh, any um, disease, so it's uh, not prominent. So once again, we uh, provide this pH uh, metria. And after that, we see that after the surgery, the patient uh, doesn't have any acid production, and uh, but she has very high reflexes that uh, uh, reach uh, proximal areas. So, uh, especially during the night time, and it's important uh, that uh, the uh, output is uh, not strong but uh, high. So the therapy was corrected and uh, all the drugs were cancelled uh, besides prokinetics. So we um, adjusted her diet and uh, her regime and uh, now she sleeps um, um, with her body upward um, to 45 degrees almost uh, sitting on the bed. I'm sorry. So during the last year, of, uh, and she came to me a year ago, so the number of reflexes uh, diminished up to three times a year. And um, now she doesn't need any kind of hospitalization. And uh, there are some type of reflexes, they persist, uh, but we uh, 
plan to repeat pH metria, but the dynamics is positive. Another method that uh, we actively use in our practice nowadays that allows us to differentiate post-resectional symptoms uh, in terms of diarrhea, insufficiency in anal sphincter, and com uh, combined disorder. And uh, these are patients after surgeries in gynecology and other type of patient. Sometimes a patient comes to our um, room and uh, complains about stool disorders. So we try to determine what type of defecations did he have, so for example, 20, 30 times a day. But we see that the patient doesn't suffer from progressive weight loss. So we continue um, the interview and um, we ask him, do you feel this cause for defecation? So he says yes. And um, in this case, we use a sphincter uh, metria to differentiate uh, gastroenterological aspect and diarrhea caused by surgeries or microbiota changes, uh, some kind of uh, inflammations in test in intestine, or uh, a second component that is related to insufficiency of uh, anal sphincter. Today, all patients who are in the uh, hospital after anterior, uh, posterior resections, so we do that sphincter uh, metry. So this combined therapy with bilateral approach allows to receive positive effect because our goal is to both reduce symptoms and return patient to a good uh, lifestyle so that they will return to their habitual matters and deeds and uh, have high quality of life. Uh, so I'm done.